in this lesson, let's take a look at combustion equations again and look at actually putting the energy into that equation. Prior to this lesson, we were only doing combustion reactions in terms of the chemicals themselves and not the energy involved. We're going to change that today. Can you write a balanced equation for the combustion of methane? Please do so. So up until now, since uh, Andrew asked the question, we've written those balanced equations without any energy included. Okay, now we're in thermochemistry, so we're going to be including the energy here. Okay? Now you don't have to do that when you balance the equation, you just balance it for the chemicals, we'll discuss the rest. So methane is CH4, and it's a gas, and if you are burning something, you're reacting it with oxygen. Oxygen is O2, and it's a gas. And the products when you have a hydrocarbon reacting with oxygen are always the same. Carbon dioxide and steam, which is water in gaseous form. Now to balance the equation, we need to write down all the elements that are on both sides of the equation. Okay, that's appropriate for this time of year because everybody's sneezing. So there's our balanced equation the way we've been doing it so far. Now, what we haven't included in this reaction, in these equations up to now, was the heat. But we do know, and you learned in that unit where we learned to balance equations, you do know we also produce light and heat. Okay? Well, the amount of enthalpy change in the system as we go from reactants to products. There's an enthalpy change. That's where the heat comes from and the light comes from. There's energy in these two chemicals and there's energy in these two chemicals here and the energy in these two chemicals is less than the energy in these two chemicals and we know that because we get that energy out. The energy has to come somewhere. You can't make energy. Okay, there's energy stored there, but you don't make energy. It isn't energy itself. Energy is transferring from one place to another. If the whole system here, as the reaction goes from here to here, if it's losing energy, and we're getting heat and light out, then we're losing energy. Therefore, the delta H, which means the change in the stored energy, the delta H is going to be negative. Okay, and the amount for this reaction of energy that exchanges as we go from this side to this side is negative 890 kilojoules of energy per mole of fuel. <clears throat> now a lot of times you'll see combustion reactions written in this form and you need to know about this kind of reaction, this kind of form, what this per mole means. The per mole for a combustion reaction like this means per mole of the fuel. Okay? So we're reacting the fuel with oxygen. It's per mole of the fuel. You with me on that? So if the system is losing energy and we're getting energy out because we've got light and heat, then we could write the energy as a product in the chemical reaction. I'm going to rewrite this equation including this energy as a product. Since the product we're getting out is heat, then the energy lost by the system is transferring to us. The, what's transferring to us is the product. And so instead of being negative, it's positive. And notice I didn't write per mole. That's because there is one mole of methane in the chemical equation. So just because I put it in the equation means it's per mole of this. Okay, does that make sense? So you can have the delta H broken out. That means the change in the system. If you include the energy in the equation, it's telling us what's happening to the surroundings where we are. Okay? So this is what's happening with the chemicals, this is about you. 
Got it? You with me? But it's important to remember what's happening in the system is not about you. Okay? It isn't about you. All right? All right. That is a kind of an inside joke that nobody got. Okay. Balance an equation for the combustion of ethane. Balance an equation for the combustion of ethane, please. So ethane is, if we were to draw out the structure of ethane to try and figure out what the formula is, ethane, the ETH, means that you have to have two carbons. So two carbons, the A and E suffix means they're singly bonded together, no double bonds or triple bonds. And so every carbon has to have four bonds, and we'll put as many hydrogens on there as we need to finish those four bonds on each carbon. And so we could write this formula as CH3CH3, or we could write this formula as C2H6, okay? So this is a complete structural formula, condensed structural formula, and a molecular formula. So if we're going to write a, an equation for the combustion of ethane, to balance the equation, you've got to have your atom inventory, C, H, and O. I'm counting two carbons, six hydrogens, and two oxygens on the left. And on the right, one carbon, two hydrogens, and three oxygens. To balance the equation, I can only use coefficients. I can't put any numbers in the formulas because the formulas are already set. Once they're set, you leave them alone. You can't touch it. I told you, homeboy. You can't touch this. Uh, since I've got two carbons on the left, I'll put a two here. That's going to change the number of carbons and oxygens. I currently have two carbons. Two times two is four oxygens plus one. That's five oxygens. I'm going to go to hydrogen next because I always want to balance oxygen last and hydrogen next to last. We're at the point where we want to balance the hydrogen. Since I've got six hydrogens on the left, to get six on the right, I need a three here. That's going to change the number of hydrogens and oxygens. I now have six hydrogens, and I have two times two plus three times one. That's seven oxygens. So when we have that situation where we've got an even number of oxygens on one side, an odd number on the other, we go through and multiply all the coefficients in the form in the equation in front of all the formulas by two. So I'll put a two here, except we don't do that in front of oxygen yet. Put a four here and a six here and rebalance everything. Okay, so now I have four carbons, 12 hydrogens. On this side, I've got four carbons. I've got 12 hydrogens and I'm counting the oxygens. Four times two is eight. Six times one is six. That's 14, okay? And so it's pretty easy to see now, if I put a 7 here, that's going to give me 14 oxygens, and everything's balanced. All right, now, that's the beginning place. That's not even where we are in this unit, okay? But you've got to be able to balance equations to get to this point. Now, here's what you need to know, and somebody asked me this in another period. How do you know these things? Well, you look them up, okay, on a chart somewhere, generally. You can ca calculate the combustion energy. We are not going to do that in this class. Um, we could do that. I've got labs where we can do that. We're not going to do that. But the delta H, the energy lost in the system for every mole of our fuel, for this particular fuel, ethane, is negative 1560 kilo, 60 kilojoules per moles. For every mole of this, if we combust it, we'll get that much energy out. All right, somebody's already done the math for us. Okay. <clears throat> now that's for every mole. When you see it like this, where mole is on the bottom, that means for every mole of fuel. The fuel in this case is ethane. Fuel, oxygen, carbon dioxide, water. Okay. Fuel, oxygen, carbon dioxide, water. So for every mole, we're going to get this much energy, but we got two moles in the equation, okay? So what that means is we're actually producing twice this, but this is listed per mole. However, if we include that energy in the equation, then we need to take that into account. So let's rewrite the equation here. And we're going to include this in the equation. 
So since this is the energy that's coming out of these chemicals as this reaction progresses from left to right, and what we're going to do put, when we put in the equation is say what energy is coming out to us. So this is inside the system. What's coming out of the system to us, that's what we're putting here. It's an opposite charge. Okay? This is what it's losing. That'll be what we gain. Okay? So it's plus. But now we've got two moles of the fuel. This is per each mole. We have two moles in this equation. And so the energy that's released to us for every two moles is double that number, change of sign. And I don't have to include per mole here because we've already got two moles here. Does that make sense? All right, or per two moles because it's double that. Okay, now, suppose we rewrite the equation where we only have a coefficient of one here. And that's typically how you write combustion energy reactions, okay? In fact, one of the things you'll see sometimes is this. You'll find a listing where it says the combustion energy for ethane is negative 560 kilojoules per mole. 1,560 kilojoules per mole. Now, you have to know whether that's talking about inside the system or outside the system. You have to interpret the way it's being stated to figure out what it means. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so let's put it in the equation as one mole of this. And typically, you find these equations are written as where the fuel has one mole in it. So we're going to divide everything by two here. And we'll end up with this kind of equation. C2H6, three and a half, O2. It's the only time you can write an equation where the coefficients are in fractions. You could. You could say 3.5 if you wanted to. And now since we cut everything down and cut it in half, and we're talking about one mole of this instead of two, the energy is going to be in half, back to that number, but reverse the sign. And always ask yourself, well, I don't need per mole here because it's part of the equation. Always ask yourself if it seems reasonable, okay? When you're, when you're writing this stuff out, perform the reasonableness test every time you write this stuff. Okay? And so if we were writing out this equation, we could just cut all these in half and still say it's negative 1560 kilojoules per mole if we're going to write it out as delta H. Does that make sense to everybody? Any questions about what we're doing here? So now, this is actually part of the equation. If it's not part of the equation, you either have to write it as part of the equation or mentally insert it in the equation the correct, correct way. Are we clear on that? So if you're given this, or just this information, and say that's for the combustion of ethane, you have to know that that's, when it's coming out as a product, it's a positive number. Okay? If they give it to you like this, but it's a positive number, you know it's coming out of the equation as a, or it's going to insert it in the equation as a negative number. Okay? It's just the reverse sign. Now, so if you get a problem like this, you just do stoichiometry. Oh, you thought we are past stoichiometry, didn't you? Mm -hmm. No, nope. you're right. We're going to do stoichiometry right up until the very last minute. So if we got 15 grams, that's 15.0 grams of ethane. And it's burned. We're going to burn it. And that's what we're doing here. We're describing that with this equation. We're burning ethane. How much heat is released? All right. This is now part of the equation. This can actually be part of a molar ratio, just like uh, one of these and three and a half of these, or one of these and two of those for molar ratio. Now it's one of these and that much energy. Just do the molar, just do the equation, do the kind of stoichiometry you've been taught, cancel units, all that dimensional analysis, everything, okay?
So uh, we have ethane being burned and going to heat requires a molar ratio of sorts. So we, we're going to have to have a balanced chemical equation here. Now we already have that. Here's the balanced chemical equation for ethane releasing heat. Okay? But we are also going to have to, we are going to, have to convert grams of ethane into moles of ethane. And the only way to do that is if you calculate molar mass. And so in ethane we've got two carbons and they have a mass, an atomic mass of 12.01. So that comes out to be 24.02. And then you've got hydrogen and that's 1.008 atomic mass times 6. And that comes out to be 6.048. So we do have an empty slot here above the 8. So whatever digit we get from that has to be rounded off. We're going to underline it. So 30.068, which then rounds off to 30.07 grams of ethane equals one mole of ethane. Now, using this balanced equation then, uh, we can get the last step we're going to need. First, we're going to convert our starting amount, 15 grams of ethane, into moles using this equality statement. So 15.0 grams of ethane, C2H6, over 1. Using this equality statement, we're going to build a conversion unit. 30.07 grams of ethane. And the moles go on the top. So this is a conversion unit because the top and bottom are equal. And this actually has a value of 1, but what it does is allows us to convert this into another measurement unit without changing the actual value. So we have grams that can cancel here and ethane they can cancel here, and we're at moles. Now we want to go from moles of this to moles of something else. And we use the balanced equation for that. Up to now we've been using just the coefficients okay, to do that. But now we have something else in there. We have a number for kilojoules. And we can use that just like a molar ratio. It is a kind of molar ratio because remember this is per mole here, even though we don't write it in the equation that way. Okay. So um, I'm going to put the one mole of C2H6 on the bottom. And this amount on the top. Moles cancel. Ethane cancels. And all we have left are kilojoules. We're going to be able to calculate the amount of heat that's released. The question is, why is this not negative? It's because this is not negative when it's in the equation. It's not negative in the equation because it's releasing heat, and this is saying plus this amount of money, I mean this amount of kilojoules, this amount of heat, this is the amount of energy that's coming out to us. It's a product. This, written this way, is what's happening in the system, so it's negative. The system is losing energy. The product tells us about what we're getting out to us, so this is the, what's happening in the system. It's positive. If what's happening in the system is negative, what's happening in the surroundings is positive. Because it's coming out. Okay? I got a glass of water. Pour out half a glass of water, right? The water's volume went down. Just like this was negative. Okay? And where'd the water go? Wherever it was poured to. That's the surroundings. And it went up there. And it went up there. Exactly. Okay? It's, it, I don't know why it's so hard to grasp, but it kind of is. But, I mean, conceptually it's easy, but it's like you're so used to thinking about if it goes up where I am, it's got to be positive. But you got to remember, it's not about you, right? Yeah. All right? It's about the system. Okay? All right. That's what I was talking about with, yeah, when I was kidding with JJ a while ago, that's what I was talking about. Okay? 
is not it's not about you, JJ. Not about you, Charlie. It's about the system. And so we round that off to three digits because we got three digits here. And so it's seven, seven, eight kilojoules. And that's our final answer.